and this is why Unity isn't worth it. Dun dun dun! Hello Turtles! Today I share the results of exploring Unity, what was good and bad, and why I will continue developing custom engines. I started developing custom engines 15 years ago, as Unity did not exist back then, and it was pretty rare or expensive for projects to use a third-party engine. For the month of April, I took a different approach and jumped into Unity to explore workflows and different tools. Five years ago, I made Snake to investigate what Unity was like, but that was a very shallow dive. I also wanted to explore the idea of releasing an asset pack to focus on improving my art skills and try increasing the income of my game development adventure. The art pack never happened because I shifted gears in the middle of April since my Ludum Dare game was a lot of fun. Before Ludum Dare, I had created a small infinite runner-like game to dip my toes into Unity. Then I ported some portions of Turbo Boom just to keep investigating without wasting time designing a new game. During Ludum Dare 46, I created Accelerate and was rated in the top 12 for fun. I continued a post jam version to put on sale, which you can grab on itch.io or check out the trailer. It is excellent and filled with rotten yolks. Accelerate took three weeks to create and supported the exploration of more tools and workflows in Unity. I didn't get to explore everything, like particles, shaders, and other special effects. However, I got the basics. I wrote down many workflow improvements and ideas for editor tools, along with some pain points I'd like to avoid in my own tools. In the comments, I will share a post-mortem that will discuss some of the art lessons I had while doing the art for Accelerate. From my notes, I found five major items from Unity that could improve my workflow and engine tools. Camera Gizmo. One of the first things I will be adding to my editor is the Camera Gizmo. This allows changing to or from orthographic mode and alignment with the world axes. While orthographic mode tends to break my brain, it is super useful when placing certain items in an aligned view. Say, looking top down to place checkpoints around the racetrack. Vertex Snapping. I also found vertex snapping to be super useful as well. Just press and hold V, select a vertex from one of the selected items, and drag towards a vertex in the world. This will automatically align the vertices. However, I did notice that Unity got extremely slow with this when I added some cornfields in my world. While that definitely increased the number of vertices, my dragging wasn't anywhere near the location, and I would have expected some broad phase collision to have reduced this lag. This one will definitely take an effort to get right and will be useful in more situations than the specialized implementation of my segmented track editor. An editor for bounding volumes. If it were easier, my first task would be adding the bounding volume editor. My present workflow is to adjust numbers in C++ or JSON data and recompile or hot load until the debug display matches expectations. Dragging this around is far faster, though more infrastructure is needed than I presently have available. Components. My framework has a concept of entities, though not completely component-based. I went with a behavior system that allows for code reuse and sharing. Only one behavior is active on an entity at a given time and can be popped off a stack. After playing with Unity, I believe it would be in my best interest to add a more typical component-based system to my entities for more code sharing. A wild and free mindset. A significant improvement to the workflow I had in Accelerate was just not caring about things. This is certainly a balancing act, and too little care will lead to significant development issues. In the prototyping stage, the speed of development outweighs almost everything. While I do prototype my projects early on, it isn't as quick or nimble. I suspect this comes from many reasons, but changing into Unity flipped my brain into a wild and free mode that I haven't experienced for a while. I was primarily focused on features that would be desirable, Yet some of the Unity tools rubbed me the wrong way, and I would like to avoid this in my own tools. Some of this is just the nature of tool development, and others might be personal preference. Having bad defaults. This would be hard to avoid in practice, but having good defaults goes a long ways to make a smoother experience. I found many defaults in Unity to get in the way. Having an audio clip set to play on awake, for instance, was extremely frustrating and at one point led me down a rabbit hole trying to fix a bug where a sound was playing when it shouldn't. User experience. It was annoying that the keys to translate, rotate, and scale and everything were mapped to the QWERTY keys, but R didn't rotate and T didn't translate. I've heard this is the same in Unreal and other engines, though it hurt my brain. I had to constantly press all the buttons to find the widget I desired. Just moving the order of two of the most common tools could reduce that guesswork significantly. 
The big picture here is to keep the user in mind when developing tools. I can see QWERTY being useful to users with experience from other engines with similar hotkeys, but as a tool developer, we must ask, are we just following a convention without purpose, or could it be better? Load times. Unity took ages to start, especially so once asset packs were added to the project, and I didn't consider those to be very heavy. This isn't a massive issue, as exporting and processing items will always take time, but it was all at once and felt disruptive, perhaps more so from a streamer perspective. This was also faster than all the times I would need to rebuild my engine libraries. It would be useful if my editor did not take forever to load a project. Play mode crashing. Near the end of the month, Unity started crashing on me and the log seemed to indicate that it was from a bad SSL certificate. That is the best guess I have from my experiences and I saw other developers commenting on it. This wasn't very fun, nor did it seem useful to me as a developer, having opted out of analytics. One thing I missed from my own editor was the ability to hold shift and drag an object to create a duplicate. This works so much smoother in my experience than pressing control D. Just hold shift, drag, 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 and you now have three extra copies of the object. While that stuff could be smoother, there are a few reasons to choose Unity over building a custom engine. If you are building your own or thinking about doing so, make sure to consider the following. Time is money. The most obvious benefit to Unity is not investing a substantial amount of time and effort in creating your own engine, adding support for all the platforms and dealing with inevitable bugs that would otherwise be worked out. This can be a huge financial savings as time and money are strongly related from the business perspective. Great for prototypes. Unity is great at prototyping games and this was a driving force behind it for years. I will almost certainly be using it in my adventure for future prototyping needs because of the mindset shift I mentioned earlier where it allows me to be a lot more wild and free. It also contains many things my engine does not which would allow me to test ideas faster. After finding an idea I like, I can then move back to my engine and do what is necessary. Importing from other tools. The import process from Blender to Unity was extremely smooth. I assume it's the same for many other tools. Just add the .blend file to the asset directory and automatically the mesh objects inside are converted to FBX and Unity formats. This means just hitting the save button in Blender will automatically update the contents in engine. My custom engine supports the hot loading of mesh assets but I need to both save the blend file normally and export it. My exporter does support batch exporting already, so the friction has been reduced, but processing the blend file directly like this is a very interesting thought. This is likely far too much effort for a solo developer, given the actual value. Mass of information. Another advantage to using Unity is the mass of information available. When you want to solve a common problem, like perhaps implementing a chase camera, it is quite easy to search Google and find what you need. Sometimes the asset store will have a full solution ready to go, though I didn't use any in my exploration. Generic use case. Unity is good for generic use. It can make a first person shooter, platformer, role playing games, and everything in between. However, I am remaining focused on racing games, and the custom engine will allow me to specialize the tools to fit those needs. This specialization will allow for faster development times in specific case of racing games, though it may reduce the ability to make other game genres. After a month of exploring Unity, my thoughts have changed slightly. I was expecting to never touch it again, but instead will likely use it for prototyping new ideas and during game jams. For long-term projects, the lack of low-level problem solving and code architecture would cause me to burn out. I will continue to use my own engine for many reasons. One, I'm specializing in racing games and can specialize my engine and tools for those needs. Two, I enjoy code architecture watching a structure grow and interact with other portions of code. Three, I enjoy having complete control over how something works. Four, to some degree I can avoid poor documentation and API breaking updates. Five, finally, I started 15 years ago and Unity did not exist and engines were rarely used. It is the way my mind works and this is why Unity isn't worth it for my larger projects. For my indie adventure, I choose to build my own engine and specialize it for racing games to keep my sanity during the long haul. Your needs might be different than mine. As a hobbyist, a generic engine probably makes more sense than a specialized one as it allows more freedom and options. 
From a business perspective, it depends on more. While the cost of most commercial engines is tiny compared to building a custom one, at least these days, there is some advantage in specialized tools. A business may also not wish to deal with API breaking issues while updating the toolset. That said, for a game business with no specific genre in mind, an engine is a massive boost, and from my personal experience pitching to publishers, a popular engine could increase potential partnerships. Leave a thumbs up and share with other developers who might be interested. Subscribe for more game development videos and go grab Accelerate to have some fun balancing eggs. Until later, turtles, have a good one.